<laughs> right. Okay. We're here. You, we can hear you. That's good. Yeah. Wonderful. That, that, that's great. Now, uh, let's remember what, what we're doing today. Uh, what are we doing today? Uh, so today, this is another live design session. Um, uh, now, but before we get ahead of ourselves, we're Paul and Sam. We run Freedom Strider. And uh, today, uh, actually, yeah, today we're, we're, we're going to be uh, designing our van. And if you don't know, uh, we're going to be uh, designing... Um, how many times have I said we're going to be? Uh, okay. Uh, we uh, we, we want to live in a van. Okay. So we can travel full time uh, in the comforts of home. So um, we've been doing these live design sessions. So basically we get your input and design something better than we would otherwise ourselves. On Unless our own. we get to display it and draw on whiteboards. Precisely. <laughs> Who doesn't love life whiteboards? Okay. So, uh, today's big question is whether we should have swivel seats in our van or not. I know it's a very important question, but it is actually a, a very hot topic when it comes to van conversions and all sorts of, you know, RV stuff and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so. so, first question is, uh, what are mm -hmm. swivel seats or what are we defining as swivel seats? Because there are quite a few different types that you can have but what we're going to be focusing on is the swivel seats in uh, the front of the van so okay. here's the back Let, oh. let's zoom in they can't see that yeah so we've got the back of the van uh, here so this is the part where you build the kitchen the bed and so on and then this bit here right at the front is where the seats go and then in front of that you've got the engine and then the road and then I, haven't, nice I, haven't, I haven't drawn the engine don't worry no you have to draw the engine precisely and label it. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid that you can do that and bore everybody yourself. No, I was kidding. Great. You, 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 you're the top mechanic around here. I, I can tell. Yeah. So yeah, basically, usually in a van, you have the driver's seat and then you have the other seats. Sometimes there's only one. Sometimes there is two. But... These seats here are what we are defining as uh, most people or some people convert them into swivel seats so that you can turn them around and go from facing forwards, aka when you are driving, to the other way around so that you can basically, I don't know if you have a table here or whatever, uh, then basically you can swivel it around and use it as a seat inside your vehicle but without having a seat inside this area, the vital space here, and having the seat actually here. We're all green aliens as well. <laughs> this is interesting. I know. Right. It is interesting. I I'm, gl I'm glad you I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad you find it so. <laughs> so, I'm pretty sure no one has that long legs either. If they did, they'd go through the floor. Uh, actually, those are almost proportional. I was actually going to think that you're going to point out that the, their knees are burst again. At this point, our people are just, <laughs> just unfortunate. <laughs> Precisely. So, um, uh, generally, civil seats, you, you, instead of facing the outside, the window shield, you face the inside, basically the inside of your home. Okay? Yeah. You, do, you do a 180 turn. That, that, that's, that's what they are. Um, and... Uh, generally, people have them because, uh, well, a lot of um, um, like RVs, campers, and self convert self converted vehicles usually they, like they they swear by them that you should always have swivel seats because they open space so much. Um, and uh, what are things that, uh, do they say about them? Um, they say, I think they say something along the lines of like it makes it easier to um, have seating yes. within the whole vehicle as a in of, it, in of it, how do you say it? In of itself? In, in the vehicle. <laughs> There's more seating in the vehicle. You don't have to build chairs so and stuff. So eloquent. Like I know. And actually, Ooh. we've had experience with swivel seats in our Scandinavia van rental for four weeks. Oh, actually, there, there, oh. there, was, there was another one. Actually, um... Car seats are actually very comfortable. That was it. They're, they're, that they're, was it. They're, they're supposed to be comfortable because you're you're expected to be in there for a while. So the logic is, well, if they're comfy when I'm on the road, I might as well turn them around and just use them in my home. 
Exactly. It's not the worst idea. No. Um, uh, and you, even get, you can even get cup holders. And you have all your electronic connections up here as well. Not a bad idea. And there are lots of windows around here as well. Don't forget, you've got the side yeah. windows, the front window. Yeah. Wow. Although at, at night, you would probably want to go more stealthy. So so, so basically, the, the, the your light's not, not cu coming through, especially yeah. if, you, if you're parked somewhere where you don't really want to stick out of the camper or uh, just purely for heat control because when you have your windows exposed... Uh, I mean, All the heat escapes yeah. from them. So we're going to do a live stream on, on insulation some other time, probably a bunch <laughs> of live streams on insulation, thinking about it. That's a complicated topic. Very. But essentially, um, uh, you know, good area with, with windows, but remember that you might not use the windows at night. So at this point, you might be wondering, why are we even having this debate? If swivel seats are such an amazing and so well used by the community of van lifers and campers and RVers and everyone else, why are we even debating having swivel seats in our van? Well... First of all, they invert actually, your knee. Well, <laughs> First of all, they invert your knee. Uh, I don't think that's the swivel seat's fault, uh, to be perfectly honest. So, I guess, live stream over. Yeah, live stream over. That's it. Wrap it up Kidding. today. Of, 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 of course we have objections to these things. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> of course we have objections. Yeah. So, uh, generally, um, sewer seats are a great, great idea in theory. However, li like you said, we experienced living with swivel seats for four weeks in a row. And I can tell you from personal experience that the uh, multitude of bruises on my calves and shins are definitely a point against swivel seats. Though I may be just clumsy, um, you know, just open bracket you are. there. Okay, I know I'm clumsy, but you got bruises too. You need like multiple open brackets. <laughs> We've also had experience, by the way, of traveling in a vehicle and not having swivel seats. So, yeah. In yes, why, sorry. Yes, why what? Yes, why are we having this debate? Oh. I am assuming. There's a bit of a delay there. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, we've had experience with swivel seats in our Scandinavia, but we've also had experience without swivel seats in our car in New Zealand, and we kind of got out the seats and kind of got into the back of the car. So we've had both worlds, and now we've got both to compare it to. So, yes. The first one is the number of bruises that we managed to accumulate in four weeks. And, okay, part of it is due down to that, you know, we were in a new space and it is a small space, so we do have to get used to it. But I don't think that was entirely the reason why we got so well, many bruises. Well, by, by the fourth week, you would expect that you would know how to turn the seat without hurting yourself. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of that going on. Uh, and uh, generally, it's, it's a true fact. Uh, turning the seats wasn't that easy, uh, which generally caused... A lot of bruising and usually it was on the legs because when the you turn the seat uh the, basically that, that's the widest part and it hits you in the and the and the plate also the has sharp edges as well yeah. and because you're in a small space you don't really have a lot of space to step around especially in that design which i do not like um but more on that some other time yeah so uh, the first reason is that they gave us a lot of bruises. The second reason... But also, also oh. when, when you turn the seat, you generally you, okay, you grab the seat and you, and you use your elbows and stuff, and because you're in a small space, your elbows hit stuff too. I was purple. <laughs> okay, that was point one. Bruises. Point one. <laughs> Again, so we'll see. But we may just be clumsy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is all for us, by the way, like swivel seats are perfect for some other people. But for us, these are our main uh, agendas as to yeah. why we didn't enjoy them 100%. Uh, so 100%. number one is bruises. Number two is... Is... Um, uh, oh, yes. Uh, the car seats are very comfy. That That is very true. However... They're only comfy... Okay, you know when you've gone on a road trip, after a couple of hours, they have reaches that point, like... Draw, draw a curve. A, a, a okay. curve? What kind of curve do you okay, want? Pass, pass okay, pass it. Okay, so you've got... Actually, red, red is for special stuff. Can you okay. please use black? Okay, we need to tilt the camera down to the second one. Okay. So, so we have time and <laughs> comfort. We're getting real okay. science here. So, you sit in your seat and you're like, yes, you're at maximum comfort. No, use, uh, use colors here. Maximum comfort. Okay, so you're at maximum comfort. Boop, boop, boop. Then that's like... Mm. I'm, I'm sorry. 
it, so yeah, it's it, his gig. This it gets a little bit more uncomfy, but you pretty much stay level. And then as time goes on, there reaches a point where it's like, yeah, I'm really uncomfy now. I need to stop for a break. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's essentially... You've um, stolen the lid. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So there reaches a point, maybe... I mean, it depends on the person. For us, it's usually, what, two, three hours? Uh, well, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, fi- I'm fine on a seat for probably about two hours. And then I, I start, uh, you know, doing some poses. Uh, I always get my legs up on the seat. You start uh, balancing uh, on your head. Uh, and... No, I usually balance on my head when we're parked. I don't usually balance on my head when we're driving. Oh, yeah, when so you're there, driving. There reaches a point where it gets extraordinarily uncomfy for you to carry on sitting down. And you need to stop. To get out, and and generally um, uh, with these with uh, with this lifestyle, so usually when you li- live live on wheels, especially in in a, in a, in a converted van, RV or camper or similar, you you are in it because you want to travel and you want to move around, which means that you are on the road in those seats for hours at a time sometimes, and like I don't know, sometimes there's six or eight hour hour drives. <laughs> Yeah. On, on for the extreme days when we want to really do, do, do some distance and get somewhere and to have to sit in the same seat no matter which way it's facing afterwards when we're relaxing um uh, generally let's put it this way you may want a different type of cushioning you know you, you, type. You, your bum will get numb from the same cushioning and um, th- that's generally the issue with um basically there are comfortable seats but anything uh, Anything comfortable will become uncomfortable if you use it too much. Yeah, there are different types of seats used for different type of comfort. Basically, in essence, that's what we're saying. Yes. So that's point number two. What was point number three? Point number three. Um, well, um, yes, uh, the design of the seats. Um, yeah. Design of the seats. So car seats are designed to keep you safe in a car and sort of be comfortable as well. But... That restricts what kind of design the seats can have. Me- meaning that um, you can't uh, lounge uh, or cuddle, you know. So you, for, 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 first, no, uh, no, no, no cuddles. <laughs> Sorry, dude. No cuddles here in swivel seats. <laughs> well, actually, that's a good idea because if I were driving, that would not be a good idea. Precisely. So, so, so see, they use for different purposes, and they they basically, when it comes to using them for um, comfortable, like watching movie time or lounge time, um, uh, they they start lacking because well, when you're in a couple, you have, uh, let's say, if you're a family, you have kids, you you know, you want the kid next to you or something. Basically, uh, they're not sofas. Like I said earlier, that that there are different seats used for different purposes. Yeah. Okay, an office chair is wonderful for doing work, but have you ever tried to watch a movie while sat in an office chair when you are able to watch a movie and not when you're meant to be working? Um, <laughs> what, he mean, what he means ab- by that is that we very frequently watch movies while we're working, but we're not actually focusing on the movie, we're so- focusing on the work, which makes it possible to watch a movie in an office chair. But when you actually <laughs> want to relax with the movie, you're not actually comfortable. Cuddles. Cuddles. In no cuddles. No cuddles. <laughs> you should say you should say in the voice that you said it before. It so, no cuddles. No, it wasn't like that. It, 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 I don't remember. Yeah. Anyway, y- you can spring it later. <laughs> no cuddles. But yes, so there. Like, if you wanted to watch a movie specifically, you would want to go and sit on a sofa because then you could lounge down. You can kind of scrawn up and go I am comfy now but if you try and do that on an office chair or that <laughs> if you try and do that in an office chair you're going to have about maybe five minutes of comfortness and then it's going to get painful because yeah. you can't set, end up sitting on your bones yeah. and essentially a car seat that, that does make you sit upright more I mean yes you can you, you can um, lean it backwards but um I've tried. Trust me. Uh, you can try all sorts of positions, but when you lean the seat seat backwards, it becomes a much more uncomfortable actually than if it's, if you put it in a more upright position. Because mm. because it's designed to make you comfortable sitting up and not lounging. Because especially for the driver, if the driver is sitting, unless oh. uh, un- unless it's my dad. My dad drives uh, lying down, but most people don't lie down when they're driving uh, for a good reason. They can't see. We're both wearing red. I'm afraid that's magenta, so I can't agree with you. <laughs> so yeah, okay. that's that's point number three. The yeah. seat, what? How should we call it? The seat 
design, comfort level, utilitarian use issue. You've just made it more complicated. I did indeed. What's point number four? <laughs> point number four is actually, uh, well, for us, potentially the most critical one, though, though the last one, the comfy one, was also really important. Yeah, because we, but... we, we do, like, like, for the driving, for the seats... There is a point where you're like, okay, I've driven for eight hours. I now want to sit somewhere else. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, generally, uh, point four really is the is the um, the sheer space that the turning um, the, takes. The th- takes. Yeah. So so you know how we said that um, uh, most people say the swivel seats save space. Well, we're not hundred percent convinced of that. <laughs> um, just purely because of the amount of space they take to swivel. Because let's um, draw on here. Uh, where are you going to draw? Um, top one or bottom? I believe top one because I've got the boxes drawn there. All right, we're going to go okay. on the top one. There we go. Okay. So, can, yeah, can they see that? Yep. All right. We're good. So, uh, what happens is um, generally car seats have a lot of extremities. So, they may have an armrest like that usually. On both uh, sides. Sorry, I'll go with a single seat. We'll um, get to the double seat in a moment. We do have something to say about that, but we'll get yeah. to the double seat so, in a moment. Gonna stick with so the these seats are actually really small, so I'm go- gonna just do them a bit bigger. Because you want a big seat. Well, they're generally big. Okay, so and then, and then you have a few extremities like that, you know, things bulging out. For safety and comfort. Yeah, and generally when you start turning, and also the car, the car itself has, like, it's not. A perfect cube it's usually like this there's some uh, stuff sticking here okay so you get the picture there and what happens is when you turn you have to move the seat back and forth continuously to basically make it turn to pass these to make the extremities pass across the bumps so basically what you do is you move it forward you'll turn it a little bit and then you move it back so you can turn it a little bit more so then you can move it into the middle so you can turn it the rest of the way around and when you turn it the rest it, of the way around, it will be sticking. It's like It's like trying to reverse a car into a very tight car parking spot. You don't want to hit any cars, and you know there's space for it, but you kind of have to go... Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, so essentially, you have you need to have all of this space... Clear. Okay, this space is going to be clear anyway because that, that's where you're driving. That, that's where you're sitting when you're driving. But this space is your living space, and you need to be very careful how much... Space, space basically you use yeah because um, the potential and how is, you use it because the potential is this bit here you could have like a, a whole kitchen counter or something span, or a whole couch that can that can yeah. fit three people when not two spanning directly behind the seat bulkhead and if you wanted swivel seats you can't do that even when the seats are like turned all the way around then you can reverse them all the way back and they could fit with the, if there was something here but in order to turn them around they can't. Yeah, and usually um, it, it leaves a, uh, it, having swivel seats. It leaves only very specific designs that you can put in order to be have the swivel seats able to turn. Yeah. Um. So basically, the space that it takes to swivel in either direction, actually, um, and to and to still keep the back and forth movement uh, um um in intact, um, uh, actually. We haven't calculated it, but from experiencing living, uh, w- you know, the the swivel seats for four weeks, we started thinking that they actually take quite a bit of space to be able to manage and to make them, you know, worthwhile. Just, the swivel part. They take floor space. They don't take air space. Let yeah, me, yeah. They they, me, they increase your kind of head space, like the the air room space that you have on top, because you you have more room here to basically sit down there but it limits your walking space. Yeah, now, that is very important. Uh, yeah, uh, that is very important when you're in a small space. Um, we are very adamant to not have some sort of thin corridor in our van because mm. um, experiencing a thin corridor was very claustrophobic, in yeah. my opinion. Um, and um, we find that the more floor space that you have, the bigger the space the space feels. No matter if it's the same type of space, the more the more floor you have covered by whatever useful yep. stuff use, useless stuff whatever they are um uh, is gonna feel more cramped yep um so this 
makes us lose some floor space uh, to be able to maneuver and also it does not let us put any kind of storage we can't double the space as storage or anything else no um, it has to be just open floor space in order for us to be able to move our seats around yes and uh, and when you also think about it when you need the floor space is when you're at the back also, when you need the swivel seats turned inwards to be able to use them that way, it's when you're living in the back. So meaning that you definitely do not, you only have this space available when you're driving. Yeah. So you know, you know what I mean? So we've got four points. We've got one. Can they see that? Um, no, they can't see that. Hold on. Oh, yeah, we'll switch. Okay. So yeah, we've got bruises. We've got two. I know that's not how you spell bruises. Is it not? Don't think so. I think there's a C in there. Mm, no. No, I don't think so. Cushioning. Cuddles. Oh, no, cuddles. Actually, that, that was number three, but whatever. No, 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 number... No. Oh, now there's going to be two different handwritings. I'm sorry, there you go. Carry on. Number three was uh, no cushioning. Yeah. Oh, great. Cushion. Cush. No. That's an S. No cushioning and number four. Uh, Actually, has no cushioning variety. Variety. And number four and, was. Uh, um, actually, wasted space due to uh, turning circle. Wasted space. So there you go. Those are our four bullet points as to why we're not entirely sold due to personal experience on swivel seats um, and something for you to consider if you are planning on having a van conversion or doing it yourself our best advice is to try the swivel seats first because you may think definitely why wouldn't you do them but we yeah. experienced it and thought well actually there are some downsides to it despite them actually being and, quite and, what, and what's key is um uh, did, I, did, did they tell you about the the, the, the long-term plans of Van, van nope. life. No, I haven't done that yet. Nope. Um, so for us, van life is a long term solution. We want to be comfortable living in a van like we're living in a house. So yeah. we, we need to replace the uh, basically the uh, no copy the functions of a traditional big normal house into a uh, van, actually a space smaller than the room that we currently live in, which is a three by three meter square. Over half of which is taken up by the bed. Yes. So the um, bed is not a Murphy bed that falls off the wall. Digressing. Spoilers. <laughs> spoilers. We were discussing beds in last time. I don't think we mentioned the, m m m mentioned the Murphy bed in that one. We brought it up. Okay. Whatever. We can't keep track of our. Of it's our not stuff. like it's Game of Thrones season eight. Don't worry. Oh thank God, it's not. No, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't handle the secrecy around that. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Lo long term solutions. <laughs> I um, like the swivel seat. See, we like the swivel seats, but they're an inconvenience. If in we can have the swivel seats plus a comfortable couch. That's a possibility. However, we'll work on it. <laughs> however, that, that immediately puts issues with, okay, the swivel seats have to be there because uh, that is um, where the drivers are, the, the windshield yeah. and stuff. So to have a couch to be able to function in the same place has to be here. Okay, and that immediately creates a separation uh, between the rest of the living space and the, 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 hmm. the couch and seat area, which is... Really, you should really avoid, you know, walls and really separating Well, maybe stuff. we can wire up the van so we can drive it from the bed. What? Just saying. No! We'll wire it up, we'll sit here and we'll have a TV screen to show us what's going on. And that will do it. Or you, know, or, you know, we'll put one car on top of another upside down and go Top Gear style and have one person controlling the steering Mr. upside Bean. down. Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean with his, with his car, like with his chair. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Sit on top of the car with a piece of string and a brick and you can control how fast you're going and the steering. It's perfect. <laughs> he felt quite comfortable in it. You only sat Did in for, for, for like 10 minutes. It was comfortable, but as we mentioned in point... Two or three, I'm not sure which one it was originally. Um, uh, if you sit in it for 
eight hours at a time, you might start fancying something else. Yeah. Nonetheless. So. so gee, that's the one. I, I can hear myself talking. <laughs> so, uh, what's the uh, next agenda? I was still talking about long-term solutions. I'm just uh, carry on. You keep interrupting me. <laughs> So, uh, yes, van life for us is a long-term solution. So um, we need to make sure that we can um, like the space, we, that, that we're going to uh, be feel, feel comfortable in the space for years to come, not just months. Like, fr- frankly, if you're traveling for longer than a month, I usually think that's long-term travel. But we're talking about years of being able to live in the van uh, more or less continuously with, you know, minor breaks when we go nose around in other people's houses. Nose around. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, or we fly somewhere and actually can't take a van or whatever. Yeah. But it's very important to... Can you make the swivel seat smaller? Um, um, well, that would mean making the driver's seat smaller. I think there are regulations around how big a driver's seat should or needs to be. Like, we can't just make it like a deck chair. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That would be funny. Yeah. C- can, you, can you have, like, some sort of um, giant office chair? Not giant, but comfortable office chair. I have one on six wheels that go up and down the van. <laughs> are, we, are we eating one? Wee! <laughs> okay. As, 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 Accelerate. As, as, as the driver, I think you should, you should be opposed to that idea. Uh, remember in Tokyo where they designed that Mercedes to be someone's house. And then small people would drive. <laughs> <laughs> I, are you saying I'm small? Because I don't drive. So, I, I'm not, well, I do, I do drive. I just hate driving. So, are you trying to make me drive? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, we all are. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, carry on. But what was I saying? Long-term travel. Okay, I've, I've practically start, started the, 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 this speech like four times now. Doesn't so, matter. basically, I get, I'm, I'm guessing that you get the point. You need a comfy, melty, lazy space that you, that you, can, that you can basically, well, be lazy in. And, some, and swivel seats, if that's your primary area of seating, might not cut it. So, basically, there... We want seats, we want a sofa, and we want a bed. Those are the three distinct sort of categories of lounging and seating arrangements that we wish for in our van and yeah. unfortunately swivel seats do not cut the sofa slash seat category both into one and when designing something like this you really need to uh, think about and balance what what will like be more most like practical like uh, because all the furniture will usually be multifunctional you have to you have to measure the practicality with uh, of that idea against your own human psyche uh literally you have to think 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 what you honestly like what what pushes your buttons like you know, you know how like random stuff pushes our buttons like literally we're sitting down in the wrong position or, or there's the wrong cup holder or whatever or the armrest is at the wrong height yeah or... Or, all of us have our crazies and whatever and and, and stuff that annoy us and you have to when you design something like this you're designing it for you so you need to be able to access your deeper you know crazy thing, mentalities yeah and and be able to accept them or own up to them and basically design, de- around. De- design around them so you, you know no matter how practical something might look you have to think about is it practical for you yeah all right pretty much okay okay so moving on from uh our experience and kind of our sort of thinking of our personal why they may or may not work moving on more to the technical side of a swivel seat so 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 generally um are swivel swivel seats worth it so we can discuss discuss whether they uh are whether they're practically worth it but you know financially and so on and um you know from the benefit that you get from them, how much do they cost and so on and, and, so, yeah. and things. So from our research that we've looked into how much swivel seats cost specifically, then I think around the figure, because you don't pay for the seat. I mean, you can, because basically how the seats are designed is you have the seat and then they're attached to a plate and then that plate is attached to like this, I don't know what you call it, but the th- there's a thing T- attached turning to Turning plate. Yeah, no, the thing that's oh. on the van. Well, we, 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 can, we can sketch that. So, Let's sketch um, it, so... So, how the seat is, I'm going to design oh, it. we're going there. Yep. Oh, okay. So, um, this is the, 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 the car. This is the side view, by the way. So, this is yep. how you see it. 
So there is a, a thing here that's permanent. Yeah, so okay. this is this is bolted into the car on the bottom yep. of the car. And what then you... bolted to this, there's a plate in the middle. Okay. Now in a regular van, this is the plate that allows you to move. Well, this is the plate that basically keeps you steady. So this is bolted into the floor. Then the plate is bolted into this. And then the seat with all the forward, backward, sidewards, lean back motions is bolted into this plate. Some vans actually don't have a plate. Some vans, the seat is just bolted directly to this secure part here. Oh, well, so basically, you don't have to buy an entire seat if you want a swivel seat. All you have to buy is this middle plate here. And that middle plate will allow you to basically turn it around. It have some sort of turn style. Oh, I don't it quite has know a disc. It. it has a disc. It's a... Basically something that makes it turn. Yeah, um, so this is the plate that you need to buy. You can buy an all-in-one seat contraption, which are like a thousand pounds. But uh, that's a lot of money. This plate costs around like 200, 250 pounds. So 300 US dollars. Around about, and that's per seat, by the way. This is just one seat here. Yeah. So So if you have two, two seats, double that. Yeah. yeah. So around £250, now you can get them cheaper. And I mean, if you're that talented, you can design your own one. But now the thing is, in the safety, in the terms of safety, if you buy a cheaper one, just think about this. Now this, this plate here is the thing that's stopping your seat from flying off this thing bolted to the van. So if you have a crash or you break suddenly or something, then this is the plate that's going to stop your seat from flying off. And if you buy a £40 sheet of metal, do you trust that to be basically safe in that situation? Yeah, you, you, you just have, <laughs> here you have to consider the, the risk factor of um, how likely is this piece of metal going to make sure, how likely is it that I'm going to die as a result of this cheap purchase? Or they should have like in. a death rating, one in 250,000. <laughs> But anyway, mm. the peop what the reason why people buy one thousand pound seat and plate combinations is because the seats are made by the car company or by yeah. a respected company that do so much product testing. These plates are not so much safety protected. Um, at least the cheaper ones are. I mean, they still have to meet a certain standard in order, so it's not made out of tissue paper. But what he means, they have. There's a chance that they haven't been tested. Or not tested properly, or yeah. to the extent that some of them are. Yeah. So, so, like, so, so you just have to consider that factor because you don't need to have a professional inst install this uh, in your vehicle. No, you can do this by yourself as long as it meets the MOT requirements. Basically, of the seat is properly bolted in and such, and there are a few others. What is well, bolted in? And as long as this doesn't Well, it move. needs to be uh, uh, securely bolted to the uh, vehicle. It needs to be securely bolted to the seat. And the seat can't move around independently. It can't, like, shoot forward when you brake suddenly. Yeah, so it, it needs to withstand, withstand the braking force. And uh, also, it, as part of the seat testing uh, in MOTs, the seat belt is key. So when you put the swivel seat on, don't put it in a weird position. Yeah. Uh, because the seat belt needs to reach uh, yeah. the clip. I mean, the seat belt... You know, the, the clip that you put the seatbelt in is usually attached to the seat contraption, but not always. Sometimes the seatbelt is actually attached to this base thing. So you've got to be careful how you do it. Also, um, it is a requirement that the driver's uh, seat especially is adjustable. So yeah. you can't buy a plate uh, that swivels, but the, doesn't have the back and forth movement. Well, I, mean, I said the seat usually has oh. the back and forth movement. The oh. seat is the thing. But yes, if you buy like our seats uh, uh, in the in the Scandinavian van had it on the plate, I think. Yeah, I said usually the seats usually do, but those seats were not. Uh, they didn't come with the van, I don't mm, think. Well, no, they didn't. No. It, so anyway, no van comes with civil civil seats. I think. No, but I mean the uh, the 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 whole seat was replaced with a different seat, so you know oh, I said you can buy those oh, seat plate oh, contraptions. Oh, oh, right, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, from a safety point, uh, from a a cost point, they're about 200 to 250 pounds each, $300. Yeah. And then from a, um, what was the next thing? The... Well, how you install it, isn't it? How you install it is pretty simple. Number one, you unbolt the seat from the plate, take the seat off. They're quite heavy seats, by the way. They're like 30, 40 kilos. You definitely need two people. Yeah. Uh, we know from experience because yeah. we... <laughs> 
uh, without any experience or or a preamble before that, just unbolted our seventh. Se- 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 what is it? It was five seats we removed, I think, or six. Yeah, five seats. Five seats. We kept two in the front. It was a seven seater car. Okay. So yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. removed those seats from our New Zealand car. They were heavy. Very heavy. Yeah. Yeah. But they were surprisingly easy to remove. <laughs> Just a few bolts in the floor. That's all that's holding you into your car. A few bolts in the floor and a seat belt. Uh, anyway, digressing. So, number one, unbolt seat from plate. Number two, take seat off plate. Number three, unbolt plate from this thing. The uh, base. The base. Number four, remove plate from base. Basically, now you have the base. That is it. Number five, you get your plate rotation your new your turning rotating, plate, your, your swivel plate, swivel plate, rotating plate, turning plate. Yeah. You basically bolt that turning plate to this, and then number six, you bolt the seat to the turning plate. Now I see where you think I'm going with this. Now, this turning plate requires two sets of bolt uh, points, one to connect it to this and one to connect it to the seat. Now all seats and things are designed differently. Yeah, so every, if every, you can get a swivel plate that is designed specifically for your make and model of your van, then perfect. But this is quite few and far between. If and you, if you may if, have if, to drill if, your if own you, holes. If, if you're going for a budget option, uh, you really have to know, you have to do the research of where your bolts are um, yeah. and then basically match that to the uh, brand on offer or something like that. Yeah. Um, and that is where the difficulty comes with uh, so, uh, so, well, swivel seats and... Um, the, the, the cost factor yeah. that you actually might need to spend more money to just get the holes in the right place but like you said you could try and drill them yeah. yourself so I mean if you have all the holes in the right place it actually only takes maybe what an hour to install the seat I would say if you know what you're doing if you know what you're doing if you, if you watch enough YouTube videos I mean <laughs> oh that's a brilliant 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 what just... Watch enough YouTube videos. How did you do? How did you replace your seat? Well, I watched enough YouTube videos. Isn't that the answer to everything nowadays? How did you learn to dot dot dot? I watch YouTube, and I figured it out. Or equivalent. Uh, it's a brilliant uh, learning yeah. library. Yeah. Anyway, so the other major point. Now we said we will come back to this, and that was like half an hour ago. But we are coming back to it. Is the double seat? I'm gonna need to draw this. Uh, You're gonna need to draw it back on. Let's, okay. Let's switch to back up here. Okay. Yeah, accurate. Right, I'm gonna. Indeed. Have <laughs> Entirely accurate. Did somebody say that? Yep. Yeah. There we go. All right. So. Okay. So yeah, most fans. I say where I, actually. I mean, I haven't actually come across a van that hasn't. Some of them don't have a seatbelt in the middle. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. All, how, how are they supposed to know what you're talking about? All vans that I've seen have the driver's seat. And then they have at least a long, big blob here. Not just another regular seat. Sometimes they have two. Sometimes the middle one doesn't have seat belts. But either way, there's a big one. And even in some of them... They're all connected together and they're just one big unit. I, I've never seen one that they're one big unit. The driver's seat is always separate. No, I've seen one where they've been a big unit before. That's it ridiculous. The, um... That's a terrible design. I agree. And I don't remember which company. Hyundai. 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 Really? Hyundai. Yep. Just they, all they, one. They, they have a massive couch. Yep, basically just a massive couch. And could the driver move his seat individually? Yeah, well, or, I mean, you, or does everybody have to move well, hey. the driver? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the driver is short. Your legs will be crushed. <laughs> Not very good taxi. Anyway, no. I don't know. Didn't test it out. But anyway, so okay. yeah, you have the driver's seat and then you have a double seat. Now, to replace the driver's seat with a swivel seat, Perfectly fine. Right. Remove the seat. I've discussed in the last 40 minutes. Yeah. There's a single thing. However, a swivel double seat is near impossible to do. Not saying it is impossible, and I'm not saying I, I people have, haven't done it. I have seen people do it. Um, but it is even more of a Tetris car park nightmare than the original swivel seat. Because this is now it's, it's nearly double, d- it's double, double as long. So basically, M- minus an armrest because then, then so you kind of have to manage to get this corner past this bit. Remember, there's an armrest here and probably an armrest here as well. Yeah. So you kind of have to like shuffle 
it a lot to get it out. Yeah. You may have to open the door. Yeah, it will be highly unlikely. First, it will be highly unlikely that you'll find the components to be able to support um, a, a double stool seat. Yeah, no uh, space because, to turn double seat. Uh, also, exactly. you, you have to consider that the base, uh, each one might have a separate base, and you're trying, trying to put a single swivel on it, so that, that, that yeah, might be confusing. Yeah, if you try to put a single swivel seat on a double base, you may have to remove the base entirely, unbolt the entire base, and then fit a single base in the place of this double seat and then put a single double. Essentially, you might actually have to get a whole seat contraption with the yeah. new seat and stuff like that. So yeah, because you won't be able to use the double seat as the mm -hmm. single swivel seat, so yeah. you may have to buy a whole new seat. But if you happen to have done uh, the, the double swivel seat thing and we're just uh, completely wrong about, about what, uh, what we're saying, then please let us know. Yeah, I mean, this um, is from the research that we've done over a couple of, uh, but, a couple of but, sessions of having a look. Most people scrap the three seats and go with two seats as yeah. swivel seats and it will be very it's gonna it's very rare that you'll be able to do a, a clear a, a clean turn so either you're gonna have to open the door to, to yeah. turn it so if it's or, raining or windy or something like that or you're you, trying to go stealth or whatever you do but, but basically if uh, for whatever reason that you don't want to open the door you're gonna have to open the door um or you, if you manage to turn it without opening the door, or even with opening the door, there's a chance that you will not be able to complete the, the full circle. Yeah. So it will be kind of uh, wonky inside. Like, it, you will not be able to get it maybe past this or something like that. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, when you're driving, it is by law. I know in the UK, I don't know about other countries, but I would put my money on they have a similar law. When you're driving, people either have to be sitting... If they're in the front of the van, they have to be sitting forwards, directly forwards. If they're in the back of the van, you know, you can have buses and large minivans where people are facing backwards. But you can only have it in the front where people are facing directly forwards. And in the back of the van, you can either have them facing at a 90 degree, so facing this way, backwards or forwards. You can't have them facing at an angle. Or forwards or, or yeah. So in the back of the van, you can have them facing at any 90 degree increment, but at the front, they have to be facing forwards. Yeah. Unless you're a baby in a very weird baby um, it's, seat. It's called a child seat or baby carrier or something. Yeah, the baby carrier, you know, where you put the baby that's facing this way so that they're protected so that they don't go slamming against the uh, airbag, airbag yeah. or something like that. I think it's against suffocation. <laughs> you should talk to transformer designers. Transformer designers? Are you referring to the movie Transformers? Yes. I don't know how they fit everything inside them. I, we, 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 we should. They'll, they'll probably have very good tips about how, how to <laughs> squish yourself in an, in an engine. So, <laughs> ah. yes. Do you have any questions? Is that it? Are we at the end? Well, that, 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 that's, that's our notes done. I think, I think that's our notes done, yeah. <laughs> I think that was plenty of, 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 of blabber on swivel seats. <laughs> uh, so overall, we are probably not gonna have uh, uh, swivel seats. Um, no, we actually, don't we didn't so. mention we are working with a long wheel wheelbase, um, uh, either a Mercedes Sprinter type or a VW Crafter, which are essentially the same van. Um, and the size of the space that we're going for is um, uh, four point three meters in length and about uh, what what one point eight just under meters yeah. of width. Um, Must be cheaper, just not touch the seats yeah what? it's it's cheaper to just not touch the seats than install swivel seats i think is that what you mean yeah it's cheaper to yeah 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 uh -huh. so so actually the, the the less you touch yes the cheaper it will be overall yeah because... uh, it'll be it'll be cheaper to build build your own couch from wood or aluminium than <laughs> than to probably play around with the seats can and, i have a and... massaging seat <laughs> you you can't have a massaging seat actually most cars nowadays especially the uh posh and fancy ones actually have seats that massage you and heat the seats and everything like that yeah so maybe you can't well actually if you want a new seat altogether you just have to buy the whole seat yeah. structure uh, the, the the seat the plate and the the base yeah. and then replace also, that so you can ha you can have the mas the massaging the, the the full body massage the 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 heating your bum one and whatever else I wouldn't be surprised if soon they have you know those fish tanks where the fish eat the, the ones skin that off your feet wash your hair hmm? yeah you'll have a you have the hair washing one you have the back massaging one and then you have your fish tank where they eat all the skin off your feet in the base those are creepy creepy 
That's too much. Too much nope. information. <laughs> also, uh, fish just... eating feet. <laughs> feet eating fish, actually. Oh, what? Fish. You said fish eating feet. Feet do not eat fish. Oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> anyway, going back to the point of uh, not touching the seats, the other good thing about not touching the seats is that these seats come with a van, which means that they're designed by the van company, they've passed all the safety tests. So if you just don't touch them... You don't have to worry about that. Yeah, basically, the less things you alter about the base design, the less you have to worry about yeah, is this going to be safe or approved or so on and so forth. It's like the, the, the less, the less hole, the, the same way the less holes you, you put in the van, the, the less you touch the safety stuff that they that they've put into the, the vehicle, the better, the more I mean, they'll like you. I mean, unless you really know what you're doing. Like we say, mm -hmm. you know, some people who modify their engines, the less you whack around with an engine, the more likely it's going to work. But if you do know what you're doing in an engine, then it's not a problem. Like with computers as well. Don't mess with computers unless you know computers. Or uh, that's how you learn, though, you know. Uh, don't do it on your main computer. <laughs> I would get a test computer like you would a test car. <laughs> Buy a 200 pound car and mess around on that engine, not your parents' car or your own one as your main driver. Because if you mess up, then you have no car. Diverging again. So, yes. Any more questions? How about a sauna in the van? Brilliant idea. Don't know if we can fit it. We have seen hot actually, tubs in there. Actually, I have a pretty cool idea ab 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 about uh, a space in the van. So if if uh, we were to have uh, basically go. lift the platform like this, have some really cool stairs. Hold on, how do I do the stairs here? Um, from this angle. This is not going to work. Just draw it 2D. Well, I'm trying to draw it 2D. Just go, just go, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> But that is not how the stairs are going to look like. Doesn't matter. See, I don't even know what you're doing. There you go. That's obvious that it's stairs. <laughs> it's not going to look like that, though. I don't care if it's not going to okay. look like that. Just draw them as the stairs. <laughs> okay. So basically, uh, you can hide the bed underneath here. So that's the, the bed. So hide the bed. Okay. And then on top of here, you can either put the couch. You were going to say a cow. <laughs> You can put a cow in there, but I, I feel the poor animal will be scared. Uh, so you can put a couch, or you can enclose it completely. And then that, that can be your sauna. See? Oh, yeah, saunas do require a lot so of... That, so then you can, you can either have this place uh, always a sauna, or you can convert it into a living space that's uh, um, just a normal couch area, or you can have a separate couch, couch over there and have a sauna and a couch and whatever and forget the kitchen. So what you can take away with this is swivel seats take up quite a lot of space. You can have a sauna in your van and this person still has an inverted knee and is floating about 50 centimetres off the ground. <laughs> wonderful. Oh, and a uh, wonderful graph down here as well about comfort over time. And uh, if you reach this point, then you just explode. Boom. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> uh, yep. Any more questions, guys? Any more questions before we go? Hmm. Final round. Ding, ding. I need one of those. What are they? Is it, is it a bell? Dong? Dong? Is it a gong? No, in, the, in uh, wrestling or so, they go dong, 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 dong. I think it's called a gong. The gong is the thing that you go... I don't know. A symbol? I don't know. A triangle? Symbol is the... Whatever. I'm not musical. Okay, I don't see any more questions coming in, so I think we're going to end, 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 end it here. Um, okay, thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Uh, just a uh, final announcement. We have uh, started our Patreon, and we are uploading more live streams, uh, like, tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, so if you want to have access to those, then you're more than welcome to check the link down below um, to basically have access to behind-the-scenes stuff, early access to our videos, and more uh, van design live streams and challenges. More wonderful drawings like this as well, but more detailed. Yes. <laughs> so uh, that is all for today, and we'll uh, see you next time. Goodbye, people. Until Bye. next time. Are you going to talk about oh. plunge pool next time? Plunge pool? I don't think that van is deep enough for a plunge pool. Hmm. I mean, uh, you could technically uh, have an opening at the top and the whole van being a plunge pool, but then uh, you can't really live in it unless you're actually an uh, uh, aquatic creature. Are you? Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to end the live stream or are you going <laughs> to...